Hi, my name is Stuart Lynch, and in this video, I'm going to introduce you to a new macro that has been made available to us in Xcode 16 and can be used in your iOS, iPad, OS, Mac OS, and other Xcode related projects. And it's the debug description macro, and it can replace the custom debug string convertible protocol. Now, it's going to be a short video for me, but I hope you will learn something here that you can use going forward in your own projects. I love getting your feedback, so if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and leave me a comment below. Make sure you ring the bell to enable notifications and get notified whenever a new video is released. And if you want to support my work, you can buy me a coffee. A link is in the description. There is a starter project for this video, and you can download it from the link in the description. There are two branches, so make sure you download the starter project branch for this project as it has the starter resources. The completed project branch contains the completed source code for the video. You can just download and expand the zipped archive. The project requires Xcode 16, and at the time of this recording, I'm running Xcode Beta 6. Now, before I dive directly into the macro, I'd like to first show you how you could create and use a debug description prior to Xcode 16. The starter project is pretty simple. I have a wine model that conforms to the identifiable protocol, so I can display a list of wines in the list view. There are four properties besides the ID property that I display in the list, and one of them, the name, is an optional property. For testing purposes, I've also created a static array of wine objects called wines that contains 10 different wines from my wine cellar. And that's what's displayed in the body of this view. When debugging an app, you often want to know what is the object that you might have selected or pass on to another view. And are these indeed the ones that you expect? Now, as a new developer, you might rely on the print statement. For example, we have this on tap gesture attached to the VStack, which is the cell displayed in the list. As we assign it to the selected wine variable, we may wish to check that indeed we're getting what we expect. So let's add a print statement to the action before the wine is assigned to the selected wine and print it out to the console. Now make sure you reveal the console either by tapping on the button down in the bottom right or use Shift Command Y. Also, make sure that you are displaying the console for the preview tab. Now, as you tap on one of the rows, the wine object is displayed in the console. Well, this is okay, but really it might be difficult to read if you have a lot of properties and perhaps you're only interested in some of them and you'd like a better representation of that object. So what we could do before is we could conform our object which is our wine object, to the custom debug string convertible protocol. Well, Xcode complains that the wine doesn't conform to this protocol, so you'll need to conform it. So we'll let Xcode generate the required debug description variable, and we can make this a computed property. So what I'm going to do is to use some string interpolation to print out a new string that will display the object in a nicer way. I'll start out by displaying the winery, and I'll follow that with a dash, and then the variety, also using string interpolation. Next, I can present the name, but the name is optional. So what I can do is use nil coalescing to create an empty string if it's nil. And then I'll follow that with the string in stock with a colon, and then use string interpolation to display that int value. So let me clear the console. And now when I tap on one of the rows, I get a much nicer presentation of the object. That's the custom debug string convertible protocol working. Now I like my computed properties down below my stored properties, so let me move this down now. Well, as you proceed in your development career, you'll use print statements less and less, and instead rely on the debugger and breakpoints. So let's remove the print statement from the on-tap gesture now. 
and I'm going to set a breakpoint at the line where the wine is assigned to the selected wine property. And then I'll need to run my code in the simulator. And then when I tap on one of the rows, it stops, presenting the console on the right and the variable viewer on the left. If you don't see the console on the right, make sure you tap here to expand and display it. Now, on the right, you can enter a print equivalent command in the LLDB, the low level debugger, that you have two choices now either P or PO. If you use the P command followed by wine, which is the object that we're iterating through, we'll get all of the properties of that object listed. That's the one that we tapped on. Let's try and use PO followed by a space and then the object that we want to print, which is our wine. In this case, then, we get that debug description printed first, followed by each individual property. So that's nice. On the left, though, we see the variable list. And in the variable list, you get self, which lists all of the variables in the view, and the local wine variable for what we are iterating through. Now, if I expand the wine, you'll also get a list of all of the properties, but not the debug description. Well, I can continue to execute now and bring up the simulator. And if I tap on another wine, the selection changes. Now, I can continue to do this and not have to use the PO command in the console to see the object that I've tapped on. If I expand self, you see both the wines array showing there are 10 values and the state selected wine property. If I expand the wines object, that array, you see the list of 10 wines, but you'll need to expand each one individually to see each property. Well, wouldn't it be nice if we could see a summary up front for the wine and for each of the wines in the array, like that debug description? Well, that's where the debug description macro comes in. In Xcode 16 and iOS 18, we can use this new debug description macro for our models. When we use this, we can remove the conformance to the custom string convertible. However, we still need the debug description property that we have created. All we have to do is annotate our wine model struct with the debug description macro. When we do this, though, we get an error on our debug description computed property telling us that only references to stored properties are allowed. So I have to remove the nil coalescing for our name property here. And I get that string interpolation produces a debug description for an optional value warning. And do I want to make it explicit? Well, the second option is what we had, so we know that doesn't work. And you'll find you'll get exactly the same error when you try and use the fix for the first option. So we'll have to leave that warning in, unfortunately. I haven't found any way around it. So let me run the project in the simulator now. I'm going to tap on one of the rows. As before, the execution breaks. Notice this time in the variables list view, however, our wine object in the variables list is displaying our debug description. This is nice. If I expand self, I see that there are the 10 wine values. And if I expand the wines array, each wine displays the debug description. I don't have to expand each wine. Well, this is really nice. And there are some differences in the console too. Remember before we used P and PO? So if I start with PO in the console, that was the one before with the custom debug string convertible that displayed our debug description. Now, however, the debug description is not displayed when presenting the object. However, if I use P and then followed by wine, the object, this time we do get the debug description. It's the opposite from what we had when we used that custom string convertible protocol. So this is worth making note of. Now, since the variable for the entire view are available, we can use the P to display one of the wines in our wines array. Say, how about at index 4? Of course, in the variables list, 
we can also expand the Wines array to inspect the individual properties like that one at index 4.2. With debug description, debugging has gotten a little bit better. Well, that's it for this short video, and I hope you learned something that you can use in your projects going forward. If you've enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up and leave a comment below. Be sure to subscribe to my channel and enable notifications so that you're made aware of new videos that I release. And you can also download my free channel listing app to be able to search for and find content from any one of my over 300 Swift and SwiftUI related videos. Thanks for watching.